sorry. Uh, so that will be again uh, given by uh, two people who work together. So Tomasz Smolenski and Pavel uh, Dolgire. Uh, so, uh, hello, uh, thank you Atach uh, for introduction. So uh, I'm a postdoc at the uh, Atach group uh, and uh, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for providing me uh, uh, with the opportunity to uh, give this uh, talk about our uh, observation uh, of Wigner crystal of electrons in a, a TMD monolayer. So this work was, uh, was done in a collaboration with uh, uh, Eugene Demler uh, group, so uh, with Pavel and Ilya, and Pavel will actually present uh, the theoretical description of these results in the end, in the second part of the, the talk. Um, um, and also with Kenji Watanabe and Takashi Taniguchi, who provided us with HBN crystals. So mm, the topic of Wigner crystallization was already introduced extensively uh, during yesterday's and today's talks. Uh, so uh, let me uh, just uh, briefly uh, recap some of the most important information. So as you know, uh, you know, at high electron densities, the electrons form a Fermi liquid state as the Coulomb interaction uh, is uh, small compared to the kinetic energy, but this can be turned around when we reduce the density, uh, which allows to increase the relative strength of the Coulomb interaction that scales slower with density compared to the kinetic term. And then, you know, at sufficiently low uh, densities, the Coulomb interaction is strong enough to uh, compensate for uh, kinetic um, energy uh, cost of localizing uh, uh, electrons. And this uh, allows them to spontaneously break the translation symmetry and form a Wigner crystal. And the ratio of the two energy scales that is needed for such a Wigner crystal to emerge must exceed roughly a factor of 30 or 37, uh, which turns out to be rather stringent condition. So, you know, uh, for example, in, for electrons in gallium arsenide quantum wells, this RS is usually of the order of one and further increase of this value requires to reduce the density to a level at which the that the disorder starts to play a you know, dominant role. So um, that's why, you know, except for some few uh, examples, like for example, the studies of the holes in uh, gallium arsenide quantum wells by Ma Mansur Shayegan, most of their research on Wigner crystals was so far to, uh, focused on systems subjected to strong out of plane magnetic field, uh, which basically breaks the bands into Landau levels and quenches kinetic energy. And under such conditions, the ground state is entirely determined by electron electron. Uh, uh, interactions, which means that the system will always crystallize at sufficiently low densities. So, uh, but even in here, the electrons, instead of crystallizing, may in principle capture some magnetic flux quanta and form a composite fermions in fractional states. And the competition between these fractional states and, and Wigner crystal gives rise to some oscillations of the transport that are observed in magnetotransport experiments, for example, in gallium arsenide quantum wells. So here you can, for example, see the uh, the, uh, the, the the data from, from one of uh, old Mansur Shaigan papers in which the resistance goes down each time the system enters fractional or integer filling, and then it essentially diverges when the electrons crystallize, as in this case, the, 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 the system becomes insulating since the Wigner crystal is pinned by the disorder. And this was you know, demonstrated in many different ways, for example, by observing this high frequency resonance related to oscillations of a Wigner crystal around the disorder uh, potential minimum. So even though these kind of studies uh, provided useful insight into the Wigner crystal properties, macroscopic ones, there is still a controversy whether they were able to uh, unequivocally demonstrate the existence of a long range charge order, of course, except for the study of, of one dimensional Wigner crystal by Shaha Lilani that we heard uh, yesterday. So um, uh, some new avenues for the uh, for this kind of research on Wigner crystal emerged with on, for TMD monolayers. Um, that that uh, that allowed to explore the regime that was difficult to access in conventional materials. So this is due to uh, very large effective mass and also reduced the electric screening due to the HPN encapsulation, both of which allowed to reach the RS values that are more than order of magnitude larger compared to gallium arsenide at the same electron density. And th this actually holds a real promise for, for Wigner crystallization at zero field, as we also heard today during other talks. Uh, and, but the contrast to conventional materials is also present upon application of the magnetic field. Uh, as in this case, the Coulomb interaction between the electrons that are separated by magnetic length turns out to be much stronger than the cyclotron energy at moderate magnetic fields. And this leads to a very strong Landau level mixing, uh, which was previously demonstrated to lower the, the energy of the Wigner crystal compared 
to fractional states. And this actually opens in principle a possibility of observing this Wigner crystal at fractional or even at integer feelings. And during to this talk, I will try to argue that this is, this is indeed possible and I will show you the results that, uh, that uh, indicate that electrons in a TMD monolayer form a Wigner crystal even at zero magnetic field. So these data, uh, these findings were revealed by our experiments on two different samples. Uh, one of, I will, out of which I will focus mainly on this one, uh, that similarly as the other one consisted of a molyday selenite monolayer that was electrically contacted with a few layer graphene flake. Then it was encapsulated between a rather thick HPN layers and finally sandwiched between two gates out of which we were mostly using the stop gate to to tune the electron density. So for the experiments, the device was loaded into a dilution refrigerator, allowing us to cool down it to about 80 millikelvin. And then it was equipped with a fiber-based optical access that allowed us to perform resonant reflection experiments with polarization resolution and also up to 16 Tesla. So uh, here you can see an example uh, gate voltage evolution uh, of the reflectance contrast spectrum acquired uh, for our device at zero field. So as you can see at uh, low uh, voltages, negative ones, uh, when the monolayer is devoid of any free electrons, basically the spectrum features just one uh, uh, resonance related to the per exciton. And then once the gate is up ramped upwards uh, and electrons are injected to the monolayer, they start to dynamically screen uh, the uh, exciton, which leads to its dressing into so-called Fermi polaron. And the prominent signature of this is the emergence of this attractive uh, polaron here uh, um, on the low energy uh, side, which basically appears in the spectrum exactly uh, at the onset of filling the band with carriers. And at the same time, uh, the exciton transition smoothly transforms into repulsive polaron, and then blue shifts broadens and becomes progressively uh, weaker. So. Uh, for our analysis of the Wigner crystal properties, it's actually essential to properly determine the electron density. And in most of the studies of similar samples, this task is usually accomplished by modeling a device as a parallel plate capacitor. But um, in, in such a, uh, uh, in, in such a uh, uh, case, this, this procedure is fraught with some systematic error stemming from, uh, from uncertainty of the HP and the electric constant and to some extent maybe also its thickness. So in order to avoid these difficulties in our study, we actually pursue a different, more accurate approach. So we determine the density based on the observation of Shubnikov the Haas oscillations of the uh, exciton transition at high magnetic field. So as we demonstrated in our previous work in such conditions, the exciton line gets narrower each time the system enter, enters integer filling factor, which then uh, by tracing the positions of this line with minima, we can determine gate voltages corresponding to integer fillings at different magnetic fields. And then they form this Landau level fan chart, which allows us to extract the link between the density and the voltage and finally, pro precisely determine the value uh, of the of the electron uh, density, uh, which is plotted here. Okay, so from now on, I'm going to focus here in this low density region in the spectral vicinity of the exciton transition, uh, and I will where we expect actually to observe Wigner crystal signatures. And in search of those signatures, we use our new technique of detecting uh, long uh, range uh, charge order, which is based on the observation of the corresponding modification of the exciton dispersion. So basically, in an undoped system, uh, this dispersion has a simple parabolic uh, uh, sh shape uh, with, with the curvature just determined by the exciton mass. Um, so uh, then when the system gets doped with the electrons in the liquid state, this, uh, this dispersion remains essentially the same. It just gets a bit blue shifted owing to a combined effect of the phase space filling and band gap renormalization. However, this picture gets uh, qualitatively uh, modified uh, when the electrons form a Wigner crystal. As in this case, the exciton electron interaction ensures that the exciton experiences a periodic potential, which makes it possible for the exciton to get brack, or in other words, umclap scattered of this, uh, of this crystal in an exactly similar way as the electromagnetic wave gets scattered when it encounters a real crystal. 
And for both of these scattering processes to be effective, either the light momentum or in our case, the exciton momentum must match the reciprocal wave uh, lattice vector of, of the lattice, which we denote here as KW. And this actually means that the exciton of this momentum, which is optically inactive, which get folded back to the light cone, where it will start to hybridize with the bright zero momentum exciton state, thereby acquire some finite oscillator strength and finally, this gives rise to emergence of a new weak uh, transition in the optical spectrum. And crucially, the splitting between this transition and the main exciton transition in the limit of weak exciton electron interactions, which is relevant in our case, is simply given by the kinetic energy of this exciton at momentum kW, which means that it should increase linearly with increasing density while the Wigner crystal constant is being reduced uh, upon injection of extra electrons to the system. And now turning back to the experimental data, you can see that this peak maybe is not directly visible in the bare uh, reflectance contrast spectra, but it becomes really prominent after taking a derivative with respect to gate voltage, uh, as you can see uh, here. So uh, this peak clearly blue shifts much more abruptly compared to the exciton, and it also becomes indiscernible at the density of around two or three times 10 to the 11 per centimeter squared. Um, but most importantly, the splitting between this peak and the main exciton peak uh, exhibits this expected linear increase with the electron density and extrapolates to zero in the zero density limit. And moreover, the slope of this dependence corresponds to the exciton mass that within the experimental uncertainty agrees with the value that was previously reported for molyday selenite monolayer based on transport and ARPES uh, experiments, which actually provide a strong confirmation of the validity of our identification of this UMCLAP uh, uh, resonance uh, as being due to scattering of the Wigner crystal. And this conclusion is even further uh, supported um, by independent set of our experiments that were carried out on a bilayer sample that consisted of two molyday selenite monolayers separated by HPN spacer. So you may already notice that the structure of this device is very similar to the one that was previously presented by Yozu. Um, however, the key difference here is that HPN spacer is much thinner, so it is actually one monolayer thick. And also here in this device, the two molyday selenite monolayers are twisted with respect to each other by about one degree. And this gives rise to emergence of a moire super lattice and the corresponding moire potential for the electrons. So now if we dope this system, let's say we dope a top layer, uh, this Injected electrons occupy subsequent moire sites. And finally, when the density is tuned to a level at which there is just one electron per each moire unit cell, then you know the Coulomb interaction between the electrons suppresses double occupancy of any given site, resulting in a formation of a mod Wigner insulating uh, state. Um, uh, and which was also demonstrated here in, 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 in this works for, 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 this, for similar systems. So this mod Wigner state is also periodically ordered. So it should, uh, you know, uh, uh, create a periodic potential for the exciton, giving rise to emergence of a umcla peak. And this is precisely what we observe here in our data. So you can see that this umcla signature in this case is appearing in a very narrow density range around the unity filling of a moire band, which is simply due to the fact that as the density is tuned away, the mod state melts and the system undergoes a transition to an un un unordered metallic state. And also, an interesting point to note is that unlike the case of a Wigner crystal in a monolayer experiments here, the energy of the umclap peak is not tunable with the gate voltage, as now the electrons do not spontaneously break the translation symmetry, but instead the geometry of the lattice is determined by the Moire periodicity. But despite the existence of these differences, the fact that we observe similar peak for those two experiments uh, clearly supports uh, our uh, interpretation that this peak heralds the presence of a charge order in the system. So from now on, I would like to come back to the analysis of the Wigner crystal properties in a monolayer uh, sample. And I would like to you know, uh, uh, examine further the properties of this crystal, first looking into its response to temperature changes, which is actually revealed by these two graphs showing the gate voltage evolution of differentiated reflectance contrast uh, 
um, uh, measured at 80 millikelvin and at 4 kelvin. So you can see that clearly by increasing the temperature, the UMCLAP signatures becomes weaker in contrast to the case of the main peak that remains virtually not affected by this temperature change. And this shows that, you know, by increasing the temperature, we uh, increase the thermal fluctuations of the electrons around the Wigner crystal lattice sites, which then effectively reduces the modulation depth of the potential that is experienced by the exciton, giving rise to a suppressed amplitude of the UMCLAP scattering. So naturally, when by increasing the temperature further, you would expect the Wigner crystal to melt, which is what precisely what we observe in these sets of data that were taken on the same device now in a different experimental setup, allowing us to go for temperatures higher than 4 Kelvin. So as you can see, this UMCLAP peak becomes almost indiscernible already at 10K, and then it fully disappears at around 15K, which shows that the Wigner crystal melting occurs around uh, this 10 Kelvin in our system. So yet another uh, way to modify the properties of electrons forming a Wigner crystal is to uh, apply external magnetic field that partially quenches the kinetic energy and you know, should enhance the stability of the Wigner crystal uh, and also should increase the intensity of the corresponding UMCLAP signature, which is precisely what we see at six Tesla in the two polarizations, sigma minus and sigma plus. So uh, you can see that these peaks in both cases are clearly weaker than their zero field counterparts. But now we also see that the one in sigma minus is a bit stronger compared to the second one. Uh, at the same time, though, the energies of those peaks are almost identical in a clear contrast to the case of the main exciton transition that are sizably split between the two polarizations owing to a strong Valley-Zeeman effect. And this striking di disparity between the splittings of the UMCLAP and the main peaks is actually due to strong electron hole exchange interaction um, that lifts valid degeneracy of the finite momentum exciton state by mixing them and thereby splitting into two linearly polarized branches, transverse and longitudinal one, uh, which are separated by the you know, exchange energy that is proportional to the momentum. And uh, this separation turns out to be strong enough to almost fully suppress the Zeeman effect for finite momentum exciton states, which also uh, quenches the magnetic response of the UMCLAP. So as a result, now the splitting between the UMCLAP and the main state is different in the two polarizations. And even though in both of these cases, the splitting follows a linear dependence on the density with the same slope as in the case of the zero field. Now, these splittings do not extrapolate to zero at zero density limit, but instead they extrapolate to a value that is determined by the Zeeman splitting of the main exciton resonance. And also the fact that the separation between the UMCLAP in the sigma minus polarization and the main transition is smaller, gives rise to stronger hybridization of this UMCLAP state resulting in its larger intensity as we observe in the experiment. So we stress that uh, all of these considerations that I presented here are actually corroborated by the full simulations of the band structure uh, that we carried out um, uh, with an assumption of contact-like interaction between the electrons and the, uh, uh, and the exciton that was actually modeled as spatially dependent hard to shift of the exciton energy. So uh, now knowing that the UMCLAP exhibits um, uh, a vanishingly small magnetic response while the main exciton state uh, um, uh, is, uh, is a, a, a sizably Valley-Zeeman split, we can expect that by increasing magnetic field, we can increase the Zeeman splitting of the main excitons such that the UMCLAP will appear in between of them. And in such a case, when we increase the density and thereby increase the UMCLAP energy, we should bring this state into a coincidence with the sigma minus exciton, resulting in the anti-crossing between these two states, which is precisely what we observe in sigma minus polarization at 14 Tesla, as you can see here. So here, the, remarkably, the hybridization between the UMCLAP uh, and, the, uh, and the main exciton is uh, strong uh, uh, enough such that we see this uh, UMCLAP even in the bare reflection data. And also importantly, no anti-crossing is observed in sigma plus polarization, as here the UMCLAP is actually much weaker owing to its larger detuning from the main uh, transition. So uh, also uh, it's important to mention here that, that this anti-crossing exhibits a very pronounced asymmetry uh, in the intensities of the two transitions that are involved. So you can see that at low densities, both of these transitions are visible, whereas at higher densities, the UMCLAP 
uh, is clearly uh, disappearing. And this disappearance may actually suggest that we melt the Wigner crystal by increasing the density. But this conclusion remains somewhat in apparent disagreement with the fact that it seems that the zoom club reappears around integer filling. And in order to provide explanation uh, of this effect and other features that we observed, we performed theoretical calculations that will be described by Pavel. OK. Uh, thank you, Tomasz. Can I share mm -hmm. my screen? Uh, yes. Uh, so I have to somehow uh, 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 stop share. OK. Yes. OK. So uh, my name is Pavel. I'm a PhD student in Denver's group. And uh, I will be talking about the uh, theoretical part of this project. You know, I want to make a step back and uh, just summarize the experimental results uh, from a um, more theoretical viewpoint. And uh, first, uh, we, we claim observation of Wigner crystal at uh, zero magnetic field. And, uh, you know, this conclusion relies on three facts. Uh, first uh, is that uh, in TMDs, we have a uh, strong Coulomb interactions. Uh, so we expect from theoretical viewpoint to see uh, Wigner crystal. Then we observed the uh, uh, UNCLOP, uh, UNCLOP peak which is a strong evidence for uh, crystal order. And also we saw that the Wigner crystal wave vector, uh, you know, is consistent with this uh, scaling of uh, umplop energy versus density. Uh, the second uh, point that uh, uh, we discussed was uh, observation of Wigner crystal at finite magnetic field. And in particular, I want to emphasize at new equal to one and uh, uh, you know, usually new equal to one is considered to be, you know, uh, incompressible integer quantum Hall liquid. And this uh, uh, liquid should be robust to Coulomb interactions, but it turns out that in interactions are so strong that uh, even this conclusion uh, is no longer true. And uh, the last part that Thomas mentioned is that uh, there is qualitative difference in, uh, in the optical signal at uh, uh, low and large magnetic fields and in particular, at uh, low magnetic fields, we, we have a uncle peak that is essentially continuous starting from zero and, and ending up roughly at uh, new equal two. Whereas at uh, large magnetic fields, there is some feature at low densities, then complete disappearance of uncle signal, and then reappearance at new equal to one. And this is what I'm going to now cover. Uh, so what we, what we did, you know, I apologize and advise that you know uh, all the details are hidden because of lack of time. So I, I just outlined the main results and uh, what we did, we performed highly focal analysis of uh, competing different crystalline states. And uh, a long story short, we found that there are four relevant phases in the vicinity of new equal to one, uh, namely exactly at new equal to one, uh, we have integer quantum hole liquid, which uh, uh, will transition and our calculation suggests that transition is first order at interaction strength roughly seven to Wigner crystal. Uh, we also have a phase like you can imagine with dope or integer quantum or liquid with electrons and those excess electrons can form Wigner crystal themselves and we call this uh, quasi-particle Wigner crystal. And the same happens on the whole side and this is the final summary of the, of the phase diagram. And uh, the reason we decided to put it uh, here is because we think that this, uh, even though the hartley fock phase diagram is not entirely exhaustive, it actually provides a natural explanation to experimental data. Uh, in particular, let's first consider small magnetic fields. And this corresponds to cut here. You see this ratio, EC over H bar and BC is proportional to one of square B. So small magnetic fields means large uh, ratio. So, sorry, Pavel, maybe it's used. I don't think you define what EC is. See, uh, I, I was uh, I was uh, sure that Thomas will mention this. You see this uh, uh, Coulomb interaction per magnetic uh, uh, unit length, this L naught, this E squared over epsilon L naught over H bar omega C. So it, it, it is a measure of, uh, of the strength of Coulomb interaction. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, okay. Uh, and can, I, can I ask, um, um... Typically around mu equal one, people consider these uh, Wigner crystal state as a Wigner crystal of skirmion. So is there any relation uh, to what you're doing here? Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, we have uh, Zeeman energy to be sufficiently large, larger than cyclotron frequency. So we don't talk about skirmions here. 
Uh, so we actually consider it to uh, compare to you need typically to compare Zeeman energy to exchange, not to right. Um, I think we tried to several. Uh, we, we actually tried to in this model also different lattices, uh, including skirmium lattices, and we found that uh, the relevant ones uh, are the ones that I show here. Uh, at least uh, for so parameters. But maybe to comment. Yeah. Yeah. I think the point is that the G factor is so much larger that actually uh, here skirmions are not favorable compared to ordinary quasi particles, so Com is, like uh, in contrast to Galois Marcinite. Okay. Yeah, so the second so, Landau level is already in the same valley with the same spin. Right. right. Okay, so did, did this answer the question? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, so what I, what I wanted to say, like a, a small magnetic fields corresponding to a strong Landau level mixing, and this is a, cut here, we see that uh, the state is essentially uh, remains in the Wigner crystal. And that's why we saw continuous uh, dependence of Uncle peak on, on density. And now I want to make a cut at uh, uh, large magnetic fields. And you know, as I increase magnetic field, this uh, it, it will be at smaller ratio EC over E1 C. And I see that uh, at uh, uh, small densities, I can have a Wigner crystal state in this model. Uh, and then it will transition to some other state, and 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 then at new equal to one, I will see again uh, integer quantum hole liquid, uh, etc. And uh, the only thing that uh, is not yet entirely clear from what I'm saying is that you know there was a uncle feature at uh, large magnetic fields precisely at new equal to one, and uh, we think that the reason to, for this uncle feature is, is because there are uh, soft magnetoplasmas of the integer quantum hole liquid. And scattering of those soft magnetoplasmas can can actually result uh, in a similar unquote like uh, uh, peak, and this is what I'm going to cover now. Uh, so one can do uh, uh, this Cowen Halperin analysis of instabilities of integer quantum hole uh, state new equal to one, and I compute this uh, polarization bubble, uh, this density density propagator, uh, essentially per perturbatively in this EC over H bar omega C. And I do so-called time-dependent hartree fock approximation and uh, extracting poles of this uh, polarization propagator, I get a dispersion relation of plasmas. And uh, essential, like, uh, let me fix uh, ECO of h bar omega C to be small. And the essential feature for me is that there is a magneto rot on minimum. And uh, it is worth mentioning that as I increase this uh, uh, Coulomb interaction, this uh, magneto rot on minimum will become softer and it will, it will be completely soft at relatively large uh, Coulomb interactions. And what was also uh, remarkable that the wave vector of the softening uh, agrees with the wave vector of Wigner crystal. And uh, okay, given this, I want to talk about uh, exciton scattering of uh, this uh, new equal to one state. And uh, I consider the simplest possible model. I have this electron electron part, I have uh, uh, kinetic energy of, uh, of exciton, and I assume uh, local interaction between, uh, uh, contact interaction between exciton and electron density. And uh, I imagine uh, sort of a shake of process, like here is uh, dispersion of magnetoplasmons shown, uh, taken from the previous slide, and this is dispersion of uh, exciton. I can imagine that there is a, like a state with zero momentum, but some finite uh, energy can decay into, into this pair. And you see momentum, this, the softening momentum of magnetoplasmas uh, is actually relatively close to uh, a wave vector of Wigner crystal. So I do expect that uh, scattering these processes can, can lead to unclop like feature. And uh, you know, in general, to solve uh, the problem of exciton, uh, in uh, interacting with electrons is, is a hard problem. Uh, but what we could do, we could took into account those magnetorotons to the low, to the leading order in this interaction lambda. And this is a diagram that we computed. And uh, the actual result uh, will look like this. So this is uh, exciton spectral function. And uh, you see that uh, at zero frequency, we have this, uh, this main peak uh, the same thing that we had in crystalline state. 
And uh, we also observed development of additional uh, broad uh, feature at, uh, at energies relatively close to UMCLAP energy. And uh, so I conclude that uh, scattering of this uh, soft uh, magnetorotons can indeed give uh, UMCLAP like feature. And uh, you know, I uh, leave all other details aside unless uh, there are questions. And with this, I uh, let Tomas to conclude. Okay, so uh, yes. Uh, so uh, yes, I hope that uh, we uh, were able uh, to convince you that um, the electrons uh, in a TMD monolayer at low densities form a Wigner crystal, which is actually revealed by this this new tool uh, that that involves the you know the observation of a of a peak of the transition that emerges in the optical spectrum due to scattering of the exciton of the Wigner crystal. And you know these results they uh, indicate that TMD monolayers they allow to explore the parameter space that was that was difficult to 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 access in conventional materials for in the case of studies of strongly correlated electron systems. So including the you know possibility of investigating the phase transition between the quantum liquid and quantum solid with a multitude of phases that are theoretically predicted to emerge in uh, in between, as we, for example, learned during yesterday's talk by Stephen Kivelson. So uh, yet another possibility is that the that 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 the spectroscopy of Umkrop scattering may turn out to be you know sensitive enough to allow for probing, for example, spin phases that emerge uh, on top of a Wigner crystal state that may give rise to some fine structure of the Umkrop transition. So with, with this, we would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tomas and, and Pavel. So now the talk is open for questions. Uh, maybe I, I, can... I don't. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Alan. Yeah, okay. I... Um, so um, I guess I have uh, one comment that uh, you can you can comment on. I'm sure you've thought about it. Um, and uh, and a question. So the comment is that the uh, highest density at which you're seeing these features is perhaps uh, an order of magnitude or so higher density than in the uh, theoretical phase diagrams that we were looking at yesterday. And, um, and uh, you know, maybe there are reasons why that's a possibility. Uh, but uh, question is, um, have you thought about, you know, there's, um, uh, if we say that the uh, light is basically a zero wave vector probe, uh, there uh, can be a big difference between uh, optical absorption um, in a you know spontaneous crystal compared to uh, the way you modeled it in terms of you know a system in a periodic external potential. So have you thought about whether or not there uh, uh, you know should be a um, a signal of the um, of the Wigner crystal in the um, uh, in the exciton absorption? I see. Uh, so I think this is exactly what we, what we are trying to say, if I understood correctly the question, so that, uh, you know, exciton sees periodic potential and, you know, size of exciton is uh, much smaller than lattice spacing of Wigner crystal. So you can think about this as a point particle. And, yeah, uh, but you know, I think that there are, uh, because the uh, broken translational symmetry is spontaneous, my question is whether that point of view is uh, uh, is really correct because I think, for example, if you uh, if your model was actually uh, parabolic uh, bands with the same mass for conduction and valence, then there wouldn't be any single signal of Wigner crystallization uh, in optical absorption. Uh, of course, your real system is is you know you you have different effective masses somewhat anyway. So it's not that system. Uh, are you are you like uh, asking about uh, experiment? Like an experiment, you, your Wigner crystal is pinned, right? And so it's... Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's one possible way to get a signal if, if, uh, if there's right. some pinning effect. 
Yeah, so I, I think uh, we, we kind of imagine that when it, uh, when it densities are, you know, uh, we imagine that we have in the Wigner crystal state a robust uh, uh, crystalline order, and this is, uh, you know, pinned to, to impurities, and uh, that's why we see a signal. Okay, yeah. Maybe we can comment on another issue that Alan raised because he says, oh, look, like, somehow the density is very high. What if, uh, let's say, again, what we're seeing is that, again, some kind of soft rot and in a Fermi liquid, like due to uh, the shake off process rather than, you know, the true Unclub sketching. So, actually, in this case, I don't know if you guys have slides. Yeah, but I do you can do it. Yeah, I, I, I also have this slide ah, uh, okay. here. Uh, so, uh, so in this case, the splitting is expected to be different. So it's expected to be twice as large. For example, in the case of uh, you know the zero uh, Tesla uh, case, uh, the splitting is is expected to be twice as large as the one that is expected for the for the Wigner crystal. So we would have then obtained effective mass that would not fit the. Uh, the one that we that we expect to have for the molybdate selenite monolayer. Oh, can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, like, oh, what if you have a liquid but have short range order? Would that also give you a peak similar to the unclap peak that we see? Uh, but just to, to is, make sure, yeah. Isn't it exactly this calculation? Because this is even the critical point. So oh, I mean, sort of whether like, it's a, like Wigner crystal insulator or it's like a short range order liquid, uh, I mean, could the wound club scattering distinguish this? That, that's right. That's right. But here we're looking at the liquid at its last point. Like, you know, if you make interaction slightly larger, it turns into a crystal. So this is a liquid which can have as much like fluctuations, which are as good as it gets. And the answer is no. If this was the case, then these umqua peaks would be at twice higher energy. Uh, why would the energy, I mean, it can give you still similar period, right? I'm thinking about just x-ray scattering of liquid water. It can still give you a peak that uh, sure. associated with it's average a, it's distance a between, the, between the- But it's a atoms. quantitative question. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand your question, but you see, because we know the dispersion. Okay, we don't know them exactly, but we could use uh, analysis of uh, static correlation function and uh, Feynman Bill's rule to convert it into the dispersion. Because we can, by, by knowing the dispersion of uh, collective modes uh, in the liquid phase, at least the, good, the best estimate we can get, we can then analyze what would be the feature. And you're right, this feature would be visible, but it would appear at a higher energy. Why is it higher? Yeah, but okay. So maybe I'm thinking about the different thing. I'm not talking about the collective mode of the liquid. It's more like the liquid itself give you a semi-period. And then if you have photon scattering over that short range period, you can also get a like unclap like scattering. So basically it breaks trans translational symmetry and it can give you a peak somewhere. So you're saying what if like some code was Disorder pin, like I don't know, Friedel oscillations. Uh, uh, okay, that is an interesting question that we haven't. Yeah, but on the other hand, uh, can, I, can I make a comment? Yeah. I, I think there's a little confusion here. So in X-ray scattering from a liquid, you're you're doing basically quasi-elastic scattering. You're, you're tip, typically the energy is very high. You're not resolving the energy, and so there is, of course, a peak at the uh, wave vector corresponding to the maximum in the, sta in the, in the uh, static uh, structure factor. Um, but now here, if, uh, if you were asking what would be the, um, the uh, and, and that might, if it corresponds to some roton, there'd be some, if you did el uh, elastic scattering where you were measuring the frequency, it would be the frequency of the, of the roton, but that would be at the wave vector of the roton. If you want to look at something back at zero frequency, at zero wave vector, then uh, you need to uh, uh, emit two rotons, one going to the left and one going to the right. And that's why um, your, uh, Eugene was saying you're going to get the uh, signal would be at twice the roton frequency, if I, if I understand what you're saying. 
Is that correct? Well, it's Ray? slightly here because you start with an exciton, it's kinetic energy of an exciton at finite k plus the roton. But it's the same idea, though. Yeah. May I ask? I think Shankar had a question. So Shankar has a question. Um, yeah. A question I, for a while. Yeah. It's a very nice uh, work and very nice talk. I understood much of it. So. Uh, <laughs> I, I have some questions about the phase diagram. I, I think I'm missing something very fundamental. Why isn't fractional quantum Hall effect seen? I mean, it, 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 you went very fast through it. Meaning if I did the same calculation, I mean, this is what we all thought the situation was, let's say in 1981. Okay, most of you are not around in 1981. Okay, but, but Bert was and, and Alan McDonald was and I was. And we thought this is what happens. And, and then came fractional quantum hall. So, so my question is, why isn't it seen here? I, I missed it. I know it's not seen, but why isn't it seen? Uh, so I, I, I think that, you know, uh, fractional quantum hall actually competes with Wigner crystal. Do you agree? No, 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 I understand all those things. I have a very specific factual question. Uh -huh. Why isn't it experimentally seen is what I'm trying to understand. Is, is it, if you go to lower temperature, you'll see it? Or is just so, energetically not favorable here, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it, I, you said it's, it's, a, it's a question of numbers, right? Because if you look at Gali Marcin, right, like it, we're talking about the ratio of Coulomb no, no, interaction. That's a factual question. And then I will discuss a few. Factual question no, no, is, no, no. So see, is, is it seen or not seen? It's not seen, right? It's not seen, no. Okay, so that's, the, that's my most important question. It's not experimentally seen. Now we want to understand why not. So, uh, Yes. And, and and but Hartree Fock will not tell you why Wigner crystal is seen and fractional quantum Hall effect is not exactly. seen. Exactly, yeah, it's so it's, it's, it's uh, that, right? that's right. Uh, the card, do you but, have that card? So well, I mean, do, mm -hmm. no, okay, oh, go ahead. I wanted just to say that, you know, uh, fractional quantum Hall and Wigner crystal compete and, you know, Wigner crystal wins as I say at low densities or when Coulomb interaction is strong. And say, if, if you take a look at the uh, old uh, papers, say, for example, by Fogler and Shkowski, they, they, they talk that, you know, uh, fractional quantum hall is expected that, uh, you know. No, no, no. Uh, I, I know all those things extremely well. What I'm asking, yeah, yeah. do you have a figure showing that for your system that in this lowest Landau, Hartree Fock is not going to give you that. You have to do a calculation of both the energy of fractional quantum hall. This is something Steve Garvin did originally in 1982, 83 yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. The two lines are very, very parallel, okay? Mansu Shegan knows what I'm talking about and Bart knows, Alan knows. Two lines are very, very parallel. Slightest change, you know? You, you use a form factor slightly different. And where Wigner crystal forms or where fractional quantum hall forms shift and so on and so forth. So what I'm asking, do you have a similar calculation for your system? Everything you're saying, understand. It's a quantitative question. I want yeah. to see those quantitative details. Yeah, so I, I don't have uh, this. Uh, it, it's short answer to what you ask. But uh, let me just mention that this calculation you have in mind is uh, they restrict to lowest Landau level, you know, and, and essentially meaning that Coulomb interaction is weak, whereas uh, what we think about is extremely strong Coulomb interaction. And, uh, you know, and that's why we think that crystal state, we, you know, we do this hardly fog, but we assume that, you know, substantial on that level makes it. Is fine. I have nothing, hard yes. is fine if you know Wigner crystal is a ground state. Yeah. Okay. Now, maybe you know Wigner crystal is a ground state because experimentally you do not see the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the fractional quantum hall, which I think is a very good logic. I have no problem with the logic. I'm not mm -hmm. attacking anything. I'm really questioning, okay? okay. If you did the calculation, because your next, uh, a cyclotron level is not that far, very far away, right? Because your yeah. mass is pretty large. So, right. uh, you know, it could well, be what happens in gallium arsenide in the third or fourth Landau level where no one sees fractional quantum hall. We only see bubble and strive phase. So your situation may be like that already in the lowest Landau level. I understand all those things. And this is what I'm asking that if you do that calculation, maybe theoretically you can say you will not see the big uh, fractional quantum hall in the lowest level. I mean, I understand you're accepting it because experiment shows it's not there, but we are curious, right? So- well, Sh Shankar, can, can I jump in? You see, this is why strategically, cool, the ratio of Coulomb interaction to cyclotron frequency less than one will left white. Because this is where we think all the fractional quantum hole phases are. And we have nothing to say on that region. No, so I, the I, honest I, answer, we would love to do, 
to do this calculation. And I think the issue is how to, let's say, how to modify Laughlin wave functions in a way that allow to include this humongous Landau level mixing. We don't not know. Not an easy calculation. That's why people ask me to do it. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, it's not an easy calculation. Oh, but, I know how to but do let's it. discuss this. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to give several Landau levels. The Landau level coupling will be important here. You know, yeah. Exactly. Okay, I, I think we, we yeah. understand. Very, very okay. So, yeah. Mansur, yeah, yeah, go ahead, yes. please. I'm sorry, I missed the first 10 minutes maybe of the talk I was teaching, so maybe you showed data. But let me make sure uh, it's clear. The, experimentally, you don't have any fractional quantum hall data, is that correct? Yes, so we don't. Uh, what do you know about the quality of these samples? I mean, uh, is it uh, mobility? I mean, I, how do you even know the density? How, how do you? Uh, so, the density, uh, uh, so the density, so the density, yes, we uh, determine it uh, based on the observation of uh, integer uh, quantum hole states at uh, high uh, magnetic field. So basically, the density is uh, is is determined by, by by this. So basically, each time when there is a high magnetic field, each time the system enters integer feeling, you know, the the line becomes narrower, and we can plot this Landau level fan chart and then determine the the density very precisely on this basis. Right. right, but you don't have any transport data, I imagine. No. Yeah, okay. So the, uh, the regarding the fractional quantum hall, you know, the one third state, for example, is quite robust to lambda level mixing. We just uh, posted the paper a few weeks ago. Uh, we can get uh, in these aluminum arsenide quantum wells, we can get to a lambda level mixing parameter, the ratio of the Coulomb to cyclotron energy, right? of about uh, 12 or so, which is quite high. And we see nice one third state. Jane Andra Jane, they have calculations exactly for this type of lambda level mixing. And they also find it that it is quite robust. So to kill the one third with lambda level mixing. Uh, so I, I don't know, what is your lambda level mixing parameter? So, you know, it, it can be uh, roughly even 20 at low fields and or even larger. Uh, this is how we what we show here. Uh, so, for example, at six Tesla, it is like a uh, like a 20 uh, at higher fields. It is around five. So then uh, but we right. yeah, five we, is not we, very high. I mean, at five, yes. you should definitely uh, see it. it should de definitely so uh, may, may I comment? I mean, um, in principle, in a fraction quantum hot set, you would also have a soft magneto hoton, right? Or sufficiently soft, maybe. So, is it clear that that, that one could distinguish this even from the Umklapp signature? Like, let's say you had a weak crystals around the nucleus one third state, then I guess one would have to be a bit more careful about the line shapes, let's say. Yeah, and no, I, I, I agree. I think that, um, so in principle, I guess what Clemens is, is saying is that. Uh, uh, because of the soft magnetoroton in, in a fractional uh, quantum all state, the signatures will be uh, similar. They will be different uh, because it's not going to be, I mean, ideally, so what you have when you have a Wigner crystal is a delta function like Umklapp resonance. Whereas in the other case, you have this Broden resonance that, that Pavel showed because it's more like a... Um, Van, Van Hoff singularity, but we do not have the possibility to distinguish between the two. So in a sense, I mean, maybe my previous comment was premature. So uh, I don't think we can say that we do not see uh, the, um, the fractional quantum all states. So certainly not in transport, which we do not do, but uh, optical signature, it's at least with the level of accuracy we have, I guess it's fair to say that we cannot exclude that that something is happening if you look at for example at six tesla at one third there is nothing special happening here but but uh we cannot say that that indeed the system uh goes through a um, fractional feeling but because of the fact that the coulomb energy to cyclotron is ratio is 20 so we thought that this is uh completely out for uh, fractional quantum so at least i did so i yeah, yeah also... I, 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 Mansur, I do not think that, I mean, I have not seen this paper. I do not think in the gallium arsenide context, we ever look at a situation where the coupling is 20. Uh, uh, you know, I do not know this most recent work that you alluded to, maybe maybe one did. Yeah, so, so a lot yeah, of coupling. 
Right. In, in Jane Andra's uh, paper, theoretically, I think they go up to 14, but if you look, it seems that there is more room. You know, that means okay, so the, in, the, in, the, in the experiment, we can actually map the uh, uh, fractional quantum hall versus the insulating phases, which we call Wigner crystal. So the, the uh, phase diagram, I would say, is reasonably clear, up to a uh, cap of about uh, 15. 20, I don't know. But in your magnets, I suspect you could get to kappa of around 10 and just sweep through the uh, fractional quantum hall. Isn't it true? How high is your magnet? Can you go in magnet, a magnetic field? Yeah, like to 16 Tesla. So in principle, we, 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 we should be able to, to go there. The question is, again, what kind of observe, what kind of signature we expect for this fractional feeling? So. It would be, I think it would be great if you just sweep mm -hmm. through the fraction and see if there is any change. You know, you could tune through the filling factor one third. On the sides, I believe one would expect the uh, Wigner crystal states at such large kappa, but right at one third, it should be a liquid state. So, Matu, maybe let me just point out. So, you see, if, if it's a Wigner crystal of quasi particles, it has much longer period. And so with this technique, it's very hard to see it just because it's like it's then the Sun Club features at very low energy. So, uh, but I would still expect something special to occur at one third, like just like what uh, Thomas and Pio showed that near like when uh, uh, that uh, like they can see when they cross okay. integer quantum color. Uh, when this integer quantum call the fact that it's like it's really special to integer quantum call state and then it disappears, I would expect the same for new equals one third. Uh, but seeing this, this new Wigner crystal with a much longer period, that may be okay, hard just technically. But maybe uh, Thomas and Natasha can comment on this. Yeah, I mean, again, what I would say is that, that if you look at the data on, on the bottom right corner, I mean, there is nothing interesting. I mean, we also have this at lower fields. Uh, I mean, there's nothing interesting happening at one third or two thirds. Uh, it, it's, it's the same on club signature. I mean, that I, I guess it doesn't exclude that, that there is a, uh, the system goes uh, from a Wigner crystal to a uh, liquid state, fractional quantum liquid state, and back, and then we cannot discriminate. So I, Atach, I have a question. Uh, uh, Atach, Atach, do you have some idea about the disorder? Some yeah. what the level of disorder here? Yeah. You have some idea? So, yeah. So uh, not quantitative, unfortunately, but but the uh, as you can see, the line is weak and broad. So. So in that sense, it is. Uh, we know that that this is not a uh, pure Wigner crystal so, so over a micron. That's a generational spectrum. problem in seeing fractional quantum hall, right? Yeah. That's not such a big problem for a Wigner crystal. It's some kind yeah. of pin Wigner crystal with some correlation length. But for fractional quantum hall, that's right. so that could be the thing. In a better sample, maybe you will see some difference as you increase the magnetic field. That's possible still. So I think mm -hmm. that question remains open experimental in some sense. Mm -hmm. right. do, doing a transport measurement, I guess, is not that hard. I mean, can you do a transport and just see what you get? In principle, yes, we just need uh, e another sample, yes, with, with some uh, contacts uh, for source drain measurements. But in principle, that's doable, yes. Yeah, I think that would so be very helpful just to give yeah, a uh, feeling for the quality, uh, you know, what you would expect. It's a challenge for everyone. I mean, we're not a transport group, but also Kim Fai mentioned that, that really getting good contacts, uh, particularly at low densities, it's yeah. also uh, for uh, colleagues like uh, Emmanuel Tutuj or Klaus Enslin is proving to be difficult. So well, transport um, can be difficult, but uh, yeah, you can measure compressibility down to pretty low density. Okay, uh, that's you, true. Yeah. Whether they is fractional quantum Hall state, you can do that. And I believe actually Corey Dean already published a paper on seeing fractional quantum Hall states in this type of materials, but I forget uh, uh, which magnetic field they are seeing it. So they observe it at higher fields, like like uh, more than twenty Tesla. Yeah, it could be higher. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Um... If there are no further questions, so I suggest that, that we uh, thank the speakers. And